Hello my dear students welcome back to our English class well my dear friends today we are going to know one more theme that is wit and humor from unit 2 what is wit and what is humor the main difference between wit and humor is the wit is a form of humor and humor is a tendency of particular cognitive experiences to provoke laughter and provide amusement okay wit and humor are indispensable though some consider these two are indistinct entities wit is the ability to say or write things that are both clever and amusing sometimes it is found in offering solutions to tricky problems well our india has abundant literature on wit the stories of tenali raman panchatantra arabian night stories chandamama stories bear testimony to this these are considered to be must read stories to children these stories develop sound logic a deep sense of humor which go along with in making the life of people more harmonious they also develop philosophical insights into different social questions the present unit brings to us two valuable pieces a one act play and a short play now look at this picture and let me ask you some questions observe the picture very carefully and let me ask you the questions what do you understand from the picture have you seen the picture yeah there is a cat and a mouse mouse is showing gun to cat and cat is pleading the mouse how funny it is looking have you seen such type of things okay now the next one can you really recall anything comic associated with these animals yes you are right tom and jerry <laughs> okay let me ask you one more thing can you imagine what may be the conversation between the rat and the cat here you have to write one conversation by your own so how to write conversation will be told in your next class and now let me ask you one more question how do people differ in enjoying humor i mean some people who can enjoy humor and some people are there who cannot enjoy the humor so different different people will enjoy the humor in different ways like young and old enjoy in different ways and uh, rural people and urban people they enjoy in different ways and uh, literates and illiterates they also enjoy the humor in different ways okay from unit 2 today we are going to know the dear departed one a reading first of all let me explain the characters in this text fine actually what is this text type this text type is one act play okay and let me tell you the characters here there are six characters in this one act play number one amelia slatter number two elizabeth jordan number three henry slatter number four ben jordan number five Victoria Slatter, a girl of 10 years, Amelia's daughter, and the main character is Abel Mary Weather. Okay, here you can see Amelia, Elizabeth, Henry Slatter, Ben Jordan, Victoria, and Abel Mary Weather. I already told you that this is one act play. This one act play, The Dear Departed, is presented in two parts as a and B readings. It was written by W.S. Hockton in 1908 who had remarkable gift for dialogue. Who had remarkable gift for dialogue. Here in the play, in this present play, he satirizes the degradation of moral values in the British middle class. Though the play is from British background, it has universal appeal and hence it holds mirror to contemporary society means anywhere in the world such type of things will happen yes now let's know about the author william stanley hockton born in 1881 and died in 1913 
he was famous english dramatist he was one of the best of a group of realistic playwrights often called the manchester school in every place he sought to present an idea he had a remarkable gift for dialogue that is evident in this the dear departed one act play the dear departed was first produced in manchester in 1908 here hockton satirizes the degradation of moral values in the british middle class well students i told you that this is one act play actually one act play means the entire scene will be at one place and the situation and the topic will be on the same thing it runs go on and, and it ends in the same scene when the curtain rises mrs slatter is seen laying the table she is a vigorous plump red faced vulgar woman prepared to do any amount of straight talking to get her own way she is in black she wore black dress she goes to the window opens it and calls into the street mrs slatter is calling somebody else let's see whom she is calling victoria victoria do you hear come in will you victoria a precocious girl often dressed in colors enters mrs slatter again telling something to victoria i am amazed at you victoria i really am be off now and change your dress before your aunt elizabeth and your uncle ben come it would never do for them to find you in colors with grandfather lying dead upstairs victoria victoria is her daughter victoria is asking why are they coming for they haven't been for ages mrs slatter replied they are coming to talk over poor grandpa's affairs your father sent them telegram as soon as we found he was dead meanwhile a noise is heard henry slatter a stoop heavy man with a drooping mustache enters he is wearing a black tail coat gray trousers a black tie and a bowler hat after entering into the house henry said i am wondering if they will come at all when you and elizabeth quarrel she said she would never set foot in your house again then mrs slatter said she will come fast enough after her share of what our fathers left you know how hard she can be when she likes where she gets it from i can't tell then henry said i suppose it's in the family where are my slippers mrs slatter said in the kitchen but you want a new pair but you want a new pair now those old ones are nearly worn out you don't seem to realize what it's costing me to bear up like i am doing my heart's fit to break when i see the little trifles that belong to father lying around and think he will never use them again why because he is dead here you would better wear these slippers of my father's now it's lucky he had just got a new pair henry said they will be very small for me my dear how can i wear your father's slippers mrs slatter said they will stretch won't they i am not going to have them wasted she has finished laying the table she set the table everything henry i have been thinking about that bureau of my father's that is in his bedroom you know i always wanted to have it after he died he died now let us bring that bureau then henry replied hey you must arrange with elizabeth when you are dividing things up why why because she is your sister and you have to divide the things equally mrs slatter said elizabeth that sharp she will see i am after it and we will drive a hard bargain i don't want to let it go to my sister why because i am here now so i will take it see how a daughter is behaving now henry said perhaps she has got her eye on the bureau as well mrs slatter said she's got her eye on the bureau as well yes definitely she will see the bureau my dear henry she will never know about this why because she is never been here since father bought it if it is only down here instead of in his room she would never guess it wasn't our own let us bring it down and she will think that it is our bureau henry said in an amazing way he said amelia mrs slatter said henry why shouldn't we bring that bureau down right now we can do it before they come 
let's do it let's bring it down henry said ah oh, i wouldn't care to mrs slatter said don't look so daft why not henry said it doesn't seem delicate somehow now mrs slatter telling we could put that shabby old chest of drawers upstairs where the bureau is now elizabeth could have that and welcome i have always wanted to get rid of this bureau henry asked suppose they come when we are doing it when we are shifting it miss slater said i will fasten the door i will lock the door get your coat off henry we will change it we will bring that bureau and put this chest in that place miss slater said i will run up and move the chairs out of the way meanwhile victoria appears dressed according to her mother's instruction she wore black dress so when somebody dies in a house all will wear black dress in britain victoria is asking to her father what have you got your coat of her father and he said mother and i are going to bring grandfather's bureau down here victoria asked are you planning to pinch it henry was shocked no my child grandpa gave it to your mother before he died victoria asked this morning this morning he gave he died this morning only no henry said yes of course victoria said ah he was drunk this morning how did he give it to you mrs slatter appears carrying a handsome clock under her arm she took it from her father's room mrs slatter said i thought i would fetch this down as well why because uh, our cloth worth nothing and this always appealed to me she puts it on the mantelpiece victoria shouted that's grandpa's clock mrs slatter said be quiet it's ours now come henry lift your end henry and mrs slatter very hot and flushed staggered in with a pretty old fashioned bureau containing a locked desk they put it where the chest of drawers was and straightened the ornaments etc there is a knock at the door the knocking is repeated there is a knock again and again victoria ran to the doors she opened the door and ushers in mr ben jordan and mrs jordan the latter is a stout complacent woman with an irritating air of being always right she is wearing an outfit of new morning means she is also wearing a black dress ben is also in complete new morning he is also in black dress he is rather a jolly little man but at present trying to adapt himself to do regrettable occasion why because this is a sad occasion that his father in law died and he want to maintain that regrettable occasion mrs jordan sails into the room and solemnly goes straight to mrs slatter and he says her the man shakes hand mrs jordan said well amelia and so he is gone at last mrs slatter said yes he is gone he was 72 a fortnight last sunday she sniffs back at here ben stripley said now amelia you must give away we have all got to die sometime or other mrs jordan said and now perhaps you will tell us all about it mrs slatter said father had been merry this morning he went out soon after breakfast to pay his insurance money in between ben said my word it's a good thing he did he paid the insurance mrs jordan said he always was thoughtful in that way he was too honorable to have gone without paying his premium that's why he might have paid henry said and when i came in i found him undressed sure enough and snug in bed mrs slatter said and when we finished dinner i thought i would take up a bit of something on a tray he was lying there for all the world as if he was asleep so i put the tray down on the bureau correcting herself oh not bureau on the chest and went to waken him a pause he was quite cold they wiped their eyes and sniffed back tears mrs latter said well will you go up and look at him now or shall we have some tea see her father is dead and she is offering tea to her sister yes society is now and then like this only mrs jordan asked 
to her husband. Well, what do you say, Ben? Shall we have a tea? Ben replied, I am not particular. If we want, we can. Mrs. Jordan surveying the table. Well, then if the kettle is ready, we may as well have tea first. Mrs. Latter put the kettle on the fire and gets the tea ready. Henry said, Look, one thing we may as well decide now is the announcement in the papers. They have to give announcement in the papers that Mr. Abel Mary Weather is dead. Miss Jordan, ah, I was thinking of that. What would you put in the advertisement? A pass. After that, Mrs. Jordan again said, Well, we will think about it after tea. And then we will look through his bits of things and make a list of them. There is all the furniture in his room. And he said, There is no jewelry or valuables of that sort. Mrs. Jordan said, Except his gold watch. He promised that to our Jimmy. Mrs. Slater asked, Promise you a Jimmy? I never heard of that. Miss Jordan said, Oh, he, but he did. He promised Amelia. When he was living with us, he was very fond of Jimmy. That's why he promised to give it to Jimmy. Mrs. Slatter said, Well, I don't know. Ben said, Anyhow, there is his insurance money. Have you got the receipt for the premium he paid this morning? Mrs. Slater said, I have not seen it. In meanwhile, Victoria jumps up from the sofa and comes behind the table. Victoria said, Mother, I don't think Grandpa went to pay his insurance this morning. Mrs. Slatter, he went out. Victoria said, Yes, but he didn't go into the town. He met old Mr. Tattersall down the street and they went off past St. Philip's Church. Ben, do you think he hasn't paid? Was it overdue? Mrs. Slatter said, I should think it was overdue. Mrs. Jordan said, Something tells me, I have a doubt that, something tells me, he has not paid it. I have a doubt. And Ben said, the drunken old beggar didn't pay insurance money. Mrs. Jordan said, I think he has done it on purpose just to annoy us. Mrs. Dredder said, after all I have done for him, having to put with him in the house these three years, it's nothing short of swindling. This old man cheated me. Ah, he did not pay insurance money. We won't get any money after his death. His, his dead body is there in upstairs. What to do now? Miss Jordan said, I had to put up with him for five years. Miss Slater said, and you are trying to turn him over to us all the time. And he said, but, but we don't know for certain that he has not paid the premium. Miss Slater said, Victoria, run upstairs and fetch that bunch of keys that's on your grandpa's dressing table. Victoria, in grandpa's room? Yes, Victoria said. I, I don't like to go there. He is dead, no. Grandfather is dead, no. Mrs. Slatter said, Don't talk so silly, Victoria. There is no one who can hurt you. Victoria goes out reluctantly. She did not want to go to his grandfather's tomb. Why? Because he is dead there lying in the bed. We will see if he is locked the receipt up in that bureau. Ben asked, In where? In this thing? This thing? Ben is very sharp. He understood that there might have something happened. Mrs. Jordan asked doubtfully after Ben alarmed, Where did you pick that up, Amelia? It's new since last I was here. She understood that this bureau was his father's. Mrs. Latter answered, Oh, Henry picked it up one day. Meanwhile, Victoria runs down. Very scared, she, she closes the door after her. Victoria coming downstairs. Mother, 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 Mrs. Slater asked. What is it, child? Why are you shouting? Victoria said, Grandpa is getting up. Ben, what? Mrs. Slater asked. What do you say? Victoria said, Grandpa is getting up, ma. Mrs. Jordan, 
the child is crazy how can a dead man wake up and come down are you getting mad mrs latter said don't talk so silly don't you know your grandpa is dead and you are telling that he is coming down victoria said no no he is getting up i saw him mother suddenly they are transfixed with amazement victoria clings to mrs latter ben said hush listen they all looked at the door a slight chuckling is heard from upstairs the door opens revealing an old man clad in a faded but gay dressing gown he is in his talking at feet although over 70 he is vigorous and well colored his bright malicious eyes twinkle under his heavy reddish gray eyebrows he is obviously either the old man abel mary weather or else his ghost i think you might have understood that these people are thinking that mrs latter and their family thought that mr abel mary weather was dead and they informed to to mr and mrs jordan and they came here to attend the funeral of abel mary weather but what happened here this abel mary weather did not die and he is coming down they are thinking that a ghost is coming downstairs hope you understood it let's meet in our next video be reading the dear departed